I just I have to ask you about Drax because we love him yeah. so much. Yeah. The ending of Infinity War was so emotional. I'd love to know what your reaction was to it. It's weird. I, when I went to the premiere, and usually when you go to premieres, everybody's like overly animated. At the end of Infinity Wars, people were silent. Everyone was processing it and didn't know how to react. Everyone didn't because it was a very somber ending. And I think people were uncomfortable to cheer. And it took a, it took a few seconds. And I took a, I was observing. There was a lot of people looking around who weren't sure to react. Once people started applauding everybody, it was thunderous. And I think it, it deserved that because it really wasn't, it was an unexpected ending. I didn't know what was going to happen. I think most of the cast didn't know what was going to happen. And I thought it was brilliant. And I also thought, those assholes. Because <laughs> now we have to wait another year to find out what's going to happen. What a cliffhanger. And it was killing me because now I'm dying to see the next one. So actually being a part of that, a part of that process and still dying to know what's going to happen, that's only a good thing. What do you personally want to see next for Drax? You know, I really wish they would tell more of the story of Drax's family. I think it's a beautiful story, and I think it, it's been lost and overlooked a little bit. It's a beautiful and, and, and heartbreaking, emotional thing to, to see, to know where that, you know, that love for his family and that heartbreak over his family, be, you know, being lost and murdered, where it comes from. And I think they, I really wish they would touch upon that more, and I think the fans would like to see that more. Uh, which is really why I really pushed and fought for a Drax standalone film. But uh, yeah, not I don't think it's ever going to happen, but I really wish they would because I think there's a story to be told there and I think the fans would really love to see that story. Even if it's not me portraying Drax, I still think it's an interesting story to tell. Now we're going to do a game of language. Okay. So <laughs> I'm going to present you with some UK slang. Okay. I want you to tell me what you think it means. Chirps. Burps? No, slurp, chirp, is it rhyme? No, chirps, no. Uh, is it uh, ch laughing? To chirp someone is to flirt with someone. Chirp, flirt, chirp, flirt. And I'm not a good flirt. I was never good at flirting. I was always really bad at it. <laughs> yeah, it's just a very, very, I was always very socially awkward and shy. So I, I wouldn't be a good chirper. Muggy. Sweaty, funky, M muggy, um, Resting bitch face, is it mean? Kind of, muggy's like uh, to mug someone off, like to take them for a fool. Mare. Mare, is that a uh, mare, stare? Uh, care, bear? <laughs> care bear, <laughs> care bear. <laughs> uh, mare, uh, uh, admire? Mare is like short for nightmare. So if you're having a mare, you're oh, having okay. a terrible time. It's a, like a bad day for yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> having a mare. Raggy. Reggie? Reggie? Like Reggie music? Like Reggie? Like Rasta? Like, no. no. <laughs> uh, so it's not reggae. Um, Reggie. Reggie. Reggie and Reggie Reg and Reggie. Reg Reg uh, Reg I don't know. Reggie's uh, like Geordie for like an aggressive person. Geordie? Or like a chav. <laughs> <laughs> like a, a dick. Kind of. More like a, like a that, wild. Use that? Like an ass? Yeah, yeah. Dick, yeah. What a <laughs> dick. What a raggy. And a Geordie is someone from Newcastle. Geordie is someone from Newcastle? Yeah. Specifically from Newcastle? Yeah. <laughs> okay. How about allow it? It doesn't mean allow it. Like allow it to happen. Allow it. Just, just, and just allow, just allow it. Kind of. It's like leave it. Oh, so it's almost like the opposite. It means like the opposite. Like allow it. Please leave it. Yeah, kind of. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> How about bog roll? Bug roll? Bog roll. No idea. It's toilet paper. Really? <laughs> bog roll. Toilet paper. What is bog? The toilet. Is and it? And the roll is the paper. Is bog is another word for toilet? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> bog roll. Now you can use it. Obviously toilet paper. <laughs> well, I will, I'll use it from now on. Do you have a funniest or most memorable moment from filming? No, I mean, there was a few mishaps, but there's always mishaps on action films. But there was a few times when I hit Martin Ford over the head with things 
that I wasn't supposed to hit him with. <laughs> like what? We had a couple breakaway things, and breakaway things are things that shatter easily. But because of resets and things get shuffled around and mixed up around, I hit him with a couple things that weren't breakaway. <laughs> but they broke over his head anyway, because he, Martin Ford is indestructible. <laughs> He's an indestructible human being. We did a couple things on the motorcycle on green screen where I had to you know, pretend like I was riding, and then sometimes it can become kind of silly. There's always fun moments behind on every film, but I'm a pretty goofy person. <laughs> so when I'm sometimes when I'm trying to be a tough guy and something goes wrong and I pop out of character really fast, so just things like that, you know, it's good fun memories. So we're expecting some explosive action. Do you yeah. have a yeah. favorite action moment in this movie? I think the elevator scene, the elevator fight scene would probably be my favorite, but I think that's because it's a unique scene and it was a, a challenging scene to film. But I think that's it. I think it's it's something that's it's very different. I don't think people have seen two large men fight in quarters this tight before. It's almost like fighting in a phone booth because, you know, I'm a large person and Lee is also a large person, the guy I fought with. We also had a third person to add for the comedic element in that scene and also somehow squeeze the cameraman in there. So I think the elevator scene would probably be one of my favorite scenes in the film. Our audience would love to know how to be as fit as you. I wanna know, how do I get body like yours? You have to have um, uh, mental issues. <laughs> because, you know, it's, and I, I mean that, you know, jokingly, but I also, there's some, um, some, some sincerity to that. You know, I wasn't a very outspoken person. I wasn't someone who would you know, kind of share my feelings. So I really found that working out and being, uh, being uh, physical was uh, therapy for me. It was, it was therapeutic for me, and so I became kind of obsessed with it, and it's now my release. I don't know, just to get my bad energy out. Uh, I take it out on the gym. But does that mean if you ever don't have any bad energy mm -hmm. to get rid of, that you'll yeah. suddenly become... Uh, possibly, possibly. Like a dad bod? Possibly. <laughs> but yeah, possibly. I, you know, I never thought about that. And I, when I say bad energy, I don't necessarily mean anger. But, you know, stress and anxiety, you know, things like that to me are bad energy. Not walking around angry, wanting to strangle somebody. Or, I think there's always going to be that in your life. And it could be come from anywhere. If you're not even having a bad time yourself, if you're concerned about someone else, that's, to me, that's bad energy. That's anxiety. Do you have a favorite kind of workout? I like boxing a lot. I, I found it very therapeutic to hit stuff. <laughs> and I think it's one of those things where boxing takes a lot more mental energy than probably most people would realize. It is a very technical thing to do. So I kind of lose myself in it. Um, so I think boxing at the moment is absolutely my favorite activity.